So I'm Cassandra Cad One. Welcome. Um, you're here for SketchUp to Revit and back. I am here with Bill Allen. Thank you, Cassandra. So welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to be talking about this interoperability between SketchUp and Revit um, going back and forth. So first off, um, I want to talk about the problem. There is a problem that exists in the industry. And sorry if I've overused this slide and you guys have seen this before. But it's probably the best slide that kind of communicates what's going on in our industry is that we have all these other um, industries, whether it's marketing or anything else that has become extremely productive, whether they're using automation or AI or anything like that. And our construction industry continues to kind of stagnate and not um, become efficient. And so there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but one of them is data waste and a lack of automation. And so in our industry, we talk a lot about construction waste, but we don't necessarily talk about the data waste. And largely it comes from us continuing to use old habits, kind of like these old CAD processes, if you will, and not changing the way that we do things. And so my background was in architecture. I worked um, at HDR for eight years in Oz architecture and Lons Bogie architecture. And so probably about 10 to 12 years in the industry and working on projects and recognize that there is this problem that existed and what fundamentally happens is that as we go from milestone to milestone in the project we have what's called data waste and so we we create you know um, this information uh, whether in SketchUp and then having to rebuild a Revit model or we create a space program in Excel and then we rebuild it in Revit and so the idea was is could we kind of bridge that that gap that existed and so personally I struggled with this um, building a lot of models in SketchUp building models in Revit constantly spending days, if not weeks, kind of recreating those. And so that was kind of my own personal challenge and issue, but I, I realized I wasn't alone. And so what we wanted to do was to try to give you guys and empower you to kind of overcome this data waste and this model drop chasm, as we call it, between SketchUp and Revit and back. And so what we did is we um, created Helix, which is a SketchUp to Revit interoperability tool. So this is kind of showing how the program translates SketchUp to Revit. And we're gonna get out of PowerPoint here in just a second and show the nitty gritty of the tool. But just to kind of show is, is how this works is you're, we're, we're bringing a fully built SketchUp model with a lot of information and we're bringing it over to the Revit side um, simply by mapping components and importing it over uh, to Revit. So that's kind of what's, what's going on. So with that, we're gonna jump into um, SketchUp and Revit and kind of show how this works. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to initiate Helix over on the Revit side. So I'm going to hit Helix under the Evolve Lab tab. And in here, we're going to have this Sync Types tab. Now, this first process, you don't have to do every time. This is something that you probably do at the beginning of your Revit rollout. So you're rolling out Revit 2018 or Revit 2019 and you want to start syncing your Revit types over to SketchUp, um, this would be this process. And this will make a lot more sense in just a minute, I promise. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sync our window library, our door library, the wall types, roof types, and curtain wall types. So these are your firm's native content. So if you already have your Revit template, all of your window library, et cetera, set up at your firm, all you're doing is bringing those types over to SketchUp to be mapped. Um, the beauty of this is that it works in anyone's firm, whether you're at a big architecture firm, a small architecture firm, construction firm, et cetera. It works natively with your content. So we would hit sync types. I'm not going to do it right now because it takes about five to seven minutes with this library, and that doesn't make good for radio, so I'm not going to show that. But that would be the process. You'd hit sync types. So I'll close that, and I'll come over to the SketchUp side. And so I have just kind of a, a simple boxed uh, SketchUp model over here, maybe a five-story commercial office building. We have a few punched windows, some curtain walls, some roofs, and we're going to go through the process of mapping this building. So to do that, what we do is we initiate Helix over on the SketchUp side. So we have Helix on Revit, and we have Helix over on SketchUp. And so over here, what we're going to do is we're going to start mapping different faces and components. So to kind of show how this works, I'm just going to take a couple of these out and unmap them. And what you do is you go through and you just select a single, a single face, you right click and you say send to be mapped. And you can see it drops in this uncategorized portion right here. And then I'll click on the window and I'll say send to be mapped. And the same happens. So SketchUp doesn't know what this is, just like AutoCAD doesn't know what elements are unless you assign them a layer. 
And so that's essentially what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, this component is a window, and this face here is a wall. Now, the glorious thing, the awesome thing about this is that once you have assigned it that it is the category wall, we get all of your Revit wall types exist. So that was the process when we were syncing from Revit to SketchUp. It now makes these wall types exist over on the SketchUp side. So I can say that this wall type is a white brick on metal stud. In this window, you can see now I have all my window families and types that existed over on the Revit side. And I can say casement with trim, 24 by 72, okay? Now, the other cool thing about this is I've, I've mapped just this one window, but the subsequent 14 windows have been mapped, which is pretty rad. So we don't have to go through and map every single window. We just have to map the one. As long as that component is repeated in the project, it's now mapped. Similarly for the wall, if I just map this one face, all the subsequent three sides have been mapped. So you don't have to map every face. You don't have to map every component. You just map one of them and the rest of them are mapped. With that, next is going to be this export. So I'm just going to hit export on Helix. It's going to tell us that it's been exported. We'll close, close this, and we'll open Helix again over on the Revit side. And this time we're going to use the import slash export tab. And I'll go through and I'll say import elements from SketchUp. And you can see that it literally starts building the assemblies over on the Revit side. So we're seeing it draw the walls, the doors, the windows, the roofs, the curtain wall, etc. over on Revit. So I can close this. And just to show there's no like smoke and mirrors, this isn't just like converting one dumb mass to another dumb mass. Um, this is a, a real Revit wall. So like if I isolate this, it honors like the, the edit wall profile. Similarly, if I go to um, edit type, you can see that this is all the wall type properties that exist. So it's not just a dumb mass on the SketchUp side and then a dumb mass over on Revit that it's converting. It actually has converted it to white brick on metal stud with the systems that exist. Similarly, if I go and I pick on, say, any one of these windows, and let me just minimize that there. If I click on any one of these windows and I say edit family, and I go to say the floor plan view, I'm actually, it's a fully parametric Revit window family. So again, not just a dumb component or a dumb mass over on the Revit side, but a real schedulable Revit window. And so that's kind of the process from going from, to syncing your types from Revit to SketchUp, mapping the types and bringing it back over to Revit. It's a pretty simple process. Um, it currently supports walls, doors, windows, roofs, and curtain walls. So those are the categories it supports currently. We try to tackle the shell of the building, which that's usually the, the uh, geometry or the components, the systems that uh, people are using SketchUp for. And so that's kind of how the tool works in a nutshell.